Good Wednesday, everybody. It is Bryce Mahoney with Gallant Few here in my favorite place, Pinnacle, North Carolina. And today on the call in not his favorite place, Mike <laughs> Paul, uh, owner of Ascension Guiding Services and Marine veteran, lives in West Virginia. Uh, Mike, thank you for being on Gallant Few Leader Chats with us today. Uh, yes, unfortunate situation you're in right now, but as we know in the climbing world, shit happens. So. That's right. And I, I'm really stoked to be online with you guys, man, talking with you today. And uh, yeah, we'll jump into the uh, unfortunate circumstance. Yeah, I'm we'll in. That off the table. So everybody's probably going to be wondering, you know, everybody's wide eyed, like what happened to this guy? So. Yeah, so where am I at? I mean, I'll give you guys a guess. Yeah, he's in the hospital. So, yeah. Hospital. Yeah. So um, long story short, we'll just we'll get through it real quick. Um had a guide day off, I guess you could say. My girlfriend, Sarah, and I went out to Cooper's Rock State Forest, one of our premier climbing areas here in West Virginia, most notably known for uh, the gritstone bouldering. Okay, uh, real, real great bouldering problems out there where if you think you can climb V5, come to uh, Cooper's Rock. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, there's also some old school trad lines um, that are scattered throughout the forest. I was actually scoping out a cliff line to start taking my clients to. Uh, the, the guide service had started picking up in regards to uh, our gym opening here in the Morgantown area. So a lot of calls and emails have been coming in for, or I'm getting a lot of uh, inquiries about transition from gym to crag, which yeah. obviously is very important because we want those uh, people to be very safe outside because it's not as a controlled environment as climbing outside or inside, excuse me. Ooh, yeah. So um, after we kind of, found the area um, and just kind of came up with a game plan. There was a kind of traditional uh, route there that I have been wanting to get on for years. <clears throat> it goes at, excuse me, guys, I've, I've had, again, I'll get into this in a minute. I've had breathing tubes and other things shoved down my throat in the past 72 hours. Uh, yeah. So that just shows how dedicated you are to being on the show. With us. Again, thank Mike, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. so um, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, yeah, so uh, 12A, I didn't find out until after the accident. It went up to 12C, um, you know, uh, V5. Oh, okay, now I get it. You didn't even, it was, it was a C, you thought it was an A, and they had recently increased the grade. Okay. Yeah, yep. that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So 512C, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Look yeah. At, you don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Thinking about, you know, the first 15 feet is like a V5 boulder problem. And I was like, well, if I can figure out the moves through the bouldering problem, crux, um, find my sequence to the hero jug. Um, it looks like the climbing let up, you know, substantially. And there I could see like a little horizontal seam where you look like you could get a small cam right after that uh, crux sequence and grabbing that big jug. So 10 to 12 times. And, and, and guys, this is where you might have to listen to your ladies sometimes because they do speak some wisdom every once in a while. Sarah looked right after at me and said after ten, about after my 10th time trying just that opening sequence and I kept down climbing, popping off. Let's come back when we have a couple bouldering pads. I was like, well, I think I got it. Right. So I did get it. I got through the crux, got to the jug. However, guys, I was gassed. OK, I was pumped. I was gassed. Um, that piece I thought I could get in was total garbage. So to I was past the point of no return. No return. There was no hopping off. Yeah. Um, so you were, I, you were in the place that my boss uh, refers to as the DFU zone, the <laughs> don't up zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're in that zone. It's it's I mean, don't up or nothing. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I would have hopped off if I would have had pads, you know, right. but, and that just wasn't an option. So I did continue to climb maybe another half body length um to a, a a good horizontal yeah uh, and i did sink uh it was a yellow tcu matulius tcu um and i i did want to be safe so i had sarah take uh took fine gear held everything was good it shook out and i was like well you know it was a shorty route just sustained hard about 35 40 feet just a little trad route yeah and uh shook out chalked up wanted to continue to climb i saw about two maybe even three pieces above me that i could get in for safe yeah. Climb. As soon as I shifted my weight to the left, so um, uh, the piece popped, blew out, got hit in the face with a little bit of rock, completely decked. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So just like, let's, I mean, obviously hell ensues after that, you know, and, and crazy, like awesome. Like a group of climbers was there, your girlfriend, yeah. you know, doing compression. Like, even though you say she is, you know, not the kind of person that you would think that would be like totally game to do that, which I mean, who knows? It's all, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face or you That's see right. popping out of skin, you know, yeah. like, but the, the bigger thing, you know, is like one, this you had a piece of gear in that like you obviously it took your weight at oh. some point because you were shaking out you know and like and that's just such a crazy metaphor for i mean this whole situation is just this crazy metaphor for like life's hard problems and like even sometimes when you think past the crux past the difficult part you get to that safe space you get to where you feel like you're protected mm -hmm. and then something shifts something some fluke happens and then bam, you know, like you said today in your post. Life changes. In nanoseconds. In a nanosecond. Yeah. Life changes. And I think that we can take that from any aspect of life, from driving down the freeway to walking across the street to rock climbing. It doesn't matter. Life can change. It can. And, yeah. and I think it's important that you adapt to that change. And yeah. um, you try to move yeah. forward in the best possible situation you can. Um, you know, someone was there that day watching over me. Um, I landed directly on that ankle. Nothing else was injured. Uh, amazing. I mean, I have some bumps and bruises. And as the days have gone since Sunday's accident, um, I, I've noticed I'm more stoved up, you know, uh, butt cheeks, you know, uh, the palms <laughs> of my hands bruised. Yeah. Uh, but the only, I mean, I had a helmet on, guys. Um, that's something I have been trying to do much better of um, in my climbing career. I've been climbing almost 20 years and guiding off and on for like 12 um, and you know, you always, you know, wear a helmet when you're guiding, um, to set a good example, not only to your clients, but, uh, the way it should be, you know, uh, for safety, yeah, uh, no head injuries, no spinal injuries. Um, we were very fortunate. Sarah and I were very fortunate. There was a young group of climbers, like you said, Bryce, that were there when we spoke earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the fellows, the young fellows, uh, called 911 the girl spoke to me to try to keep me calm keep me breathing i mean i knew it was devastating um immediately, yeah. immediately. i've never felt pain like that in my life um and again uh compound fracture tib fib through the skin you yeah. left yeah. ankle nasty horror movie stuff man you know so uh -huh. yeah and i mean so so the takeaway obviously like hearing the hearing what had happened it's more of like do you have any do you have any like improves on like gear you know as far as like medical gear that you think you should have with you like and those are those are the, like the aars you know yeah, yeah I, absolutely in, you know? I'll, I'll, what, I'll be what, honest like you know i have that i have that generic rei first aid kit you know in my climbing pack and you know what? No joke. It came in handy when uh, the EMTs and the fire and all the volunteer rescuers got there. You know, I had like a space blanket. I started to shiver very badly. I don't yeah. know if I classify that as shock or just being cold. That's you know, I, I don't, you know, it was, it, it was probably getting to the point. I mean, I laid on the ground on rock, you know, for about mm -hmm. an hour, maybe more before they even got, you know, me littered and out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really awesome. No, yeah. I mean, and I mean, so doom, doom, doom. Buy a medical kit at REI, everybody, or, <laughs> or if you want North American Rescue, they have great yeah. kits they, at the X-Pack, which yeah. is designed by a buddy of mine, DJ Strunts, and it is for adventurers. I mean, this thing is a clamshell. It's like a miniature hospital on a bag. Yeah, yeah. I take it on all my camping trips. It's, and the best part about it, what I've really noticed and in this situation, is having some form of foldable SAM splint and then yeah. something to compress because in all reality – that is what we are going to deal with the most is broken bones yeah. and to splint and stabilize something. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, Sarah, um, you know, she comes from a health background. She, you know, she has her master's in like uh, you know, health services or something, but she's never actually worked with like the blood and guts aspect of yeah. <laughs> I was I was very proud of her. I mean, she kept compression uh, on one of the bones. Uh, we didn't know the other one was out, to be completely honest. And Bryce, you know, I spoke about that a little bit ago, guys. The other bone and i you know i always get the fib and the tib kind of like backwards sometimes yeah, sure. i couldn't even tell you which one it was but the one on the left side of my left foot left ankle was actually in the dirt the whole time i know that's really gross but um i've had two surgeries since sunday one sunday as soon as i got here um you know getting those cleaned out and put back in and then they opened me up again 
yesterday just to make sure that was cleaned out. That priority number one was getting, you know, any kind of dirt, any kind of infection, uh, you know, in uh, my system out. Um, so they did open me up yesterday here. And I, I, I guys, I cannot tell you how fortunate I am right now. Um, here at West Virginia University Hospital, Ruby Memorial, the staff, the orthopedic team, from the EMT to the fire to the rescuers to my climbing community here to the gym. I, I'm just like, I, I have been emotionally overwhelmed by, when you think you're alone, sometimes you, you aren't. You yeah. know, there's always someone there that's going to be there for you. And that roof has been completely blown off. You know, I mean, it's amazing, man. I, I am just, I don't know how ever I'm going to, you know, repay those people. And, you know, I had a talk with my dad this morning. You know, we FaceTimed early this morning when I was, you know, he's at home in Parkburg, West Virginia. And uh, he's like, you don't have to repay those people. But what you have to do is go out and live your best life now because they kept you having yours. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I am just so thankful for the majority of the EMS and the yeah. healthcare people that work out there. A lot of them, they do it because they love to do it, you know. Yeah. And, but, same, with, same with teachers. The majority of teachers love to teach because they love to do it. You know, yeah. so they're not. They didn't do that to to be rich. And yeah, I mean, you're right, man. We the the best way we pay it forward is to, you know, take this situation. Um, you know, I I constantly talk about the good enough. You know, in in, in the Falcon guides, like single pitch uh, manuals and stuff, they talk about anchors and different stuff about good enough. And like we can always, we should always be striving for the best possible you know, that we can, but like, absolutely that we, we did our best and like analyzing the situation and moving forward and past it and, mm -hmm. and just keep in and continuing to climb, you know, yeah. that's the, yeah. you know, the, the looming question in the back of people's minds about stuff like this, like, yeah. will he continue to climb? You know? Um, and there's no question. I mean, it is what drives me. It's my passion in life. We can go into that here if you want to as well. But, um, Spoiler alert. We're doing yeah, it. yeah, spoiler alert. But, I mean, um, and Bryce, you can direct that conversation. But I mean, there was another very traumatic thing that happened in my life while I was in the Marine Corps uh, from 2000 to 2003. You know, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Um, and when you think you're like 19, 20 years old at that time, you automatically think the worst. You know, you're like, oh, man, I, I probably have cancer. It's a brain tumor. I mean, you don't hear about those going well, you know, at that age. Nope. Um, but I was always outdoorsy um, growing up, uh, loved playing in the woods. And then I was at Marshall University for undergrad while I was in the Marine Corps Reserves and um, just went home one week with my parents and was having like these really weird um, visual seizures is what they were classified then uh, in my left vision field. So tumor was in my right side at the back of my brain. So, you know, I, what we yeah. learned growing up is your right controls your left, left controls your right, all that good stuff. So it was, you know. Uh, impeding on my vision and so scared as hell um you know got a referral from my family doctor in parkersburg west virginia to john hopkins university in baltimore hospital yep. you really can't go to a better place <laughs> no you can't <laughs> you really can't yeah and you know the transition was amazing just like i'm dealing with now with this leg injury i mean they found it they took it out you know, two weeks later, I was back to normal life and they're like, go about your business, man. And I was like, what? You know, I just had like a brain tumor, you know, but yeah, it was hard transitioning because, of course, when the Marine Corps saw the term, you know, visual seizure, they associate that with seizure, like grandma, seizure, like writhing yeah. on the ground, choking yeah. on your tongue, which is a devastating thing to have. And they didn't want me shooting, you know, my fellow Marines in the back if I was going into combat. If something was like that to happen. Totally you understandable. Be, you can't be eating crayons and having seizures. <laughs> Sticking your fingers in electrical sockets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but what ended up healing me was Seneca Rocks, West Virginia, was always a kind of like spiritual place for me. Not just because it was in West Virginia and in the mountains, but... You know, we'd, I'd go hiking there during college, and I think maybe I even went there once in high school. But I was like, I wonder if you can climb those things, you know? Yeah. So I no joke went back to Huntington, West Virginia, where I was in undergrad at Marshall, uh, logged on my dial up. You know, if some of you guys might remember dial up, you know, you put that in. And you... 
Yeah, yeah. Hey, we get that, 256 megabytes this month. Yeah, so yeah. It's like, give me 15 months. minutes. We might get to the homepage. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I think I, like, Yahoo'd, not Googled, you know, like, sent yeah. a box. And uh, what ended up being a life-changing event, man? Um, I ended up running into who is my mentor now, I would say, Tom Cecil. He's the owner of Seneca Rock Mountain Guides. Um, called up, got a private guide. I was like, oh, shit, you can climb these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I think I, like, gym climbed, like, twice, you know, like, ever, like, in maybe Colorado visiting a friend. Right, um, right. And um, I went out with this, another guy who ended up being a mentor of mine and, a, you know, just, like, a life partner through climbing. His name is Doug Downs. He actually lives here in Morgantown now. He and his yeah. wife, Katie. Uh, bought a farm and relocated here. Um, they actually live kind of down your guys' way. They lived in the Wilmington area for a few yeah. years. And I think they just kind of missed being north in the mountains maybe. And yeah. bought, bought a farm, came back here. Doug's a EMT paramedic, I think. Um, Katie works here at, at um, uh, Chestnut Ridge Hospital. She's a, a, a abuse counselor. Awesome. For, uh, yeah, man, it's just amazing, man. And they're, how, and they're where they want to be. Yeah, like, exactly. They're where they want to be. Yeah, yeah exactly. So... You know, I, I really got into climbing, like, full bore, man. Like, it wasn't just, like, climbing, but I started educating myself through, like, guide courses and the yeah. AMPA and, like, just really sinking myself into it because not only is climbing enjoyable and almost a spiritual experience for me, but I wanted to know everything there was to know about it. And that came from, you know, your anchor systems to doing everything safely and properly. And, I mean... I was just immersed in it, you know, so. Yeah. So, and, and, so it, it, it like, and this is kind of the same time frame that you're like post brain tumor. Mm. The, Marine, the Marines are kind of like sketched out about this whole seizure stuff. Yeah. Is, is kind of like the desire to do and like to dive into these, this like knowledge and this guiding aspect, maybe a way to just kind of like put that, like table that stuff and just really focus in on something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I highly, I mean, that's a great way to look at it, man. And I think that's the way I was looking at it without knowing I was looking at it like that, if that makes sense. Sure. Because I, mean, I had friends in the Marines that were going off to fight in Afghanistan. You yeah. know, obviously it was the first country and time frame, you know, that we invaded because of 9-11. And, yeah. you know, not only did they come back from Afghanistan, some of them went back and went into Iraq and didn't come home. Sure. So, um, a good buddy of mine that I went through combat engineer school together in um, uh, Courthouse Bay at Camp Lejeune um, didn't come home. And he and I came together on uh, home together on recruiter's assistance during schooling. Um, he was killed in the Battle of Fallujah, I think. Um, another one of my buddies, Dylan Hainanen, he's from Michigan. He did come home, but he got a couple times. Um, in um, Baghdad, I think. So, I mean, these things, this information was coming back to me. Yeah. Where I ended up having this survivor's guilt, you sure. know, okay. I didn't be there to back them up. So I was trying to find an outlet and I, and I think I found that in climbing, you know, so. And yeah, you went full, I mean, you went full send on it and it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. And I mean, then so like this is beginning 2000s, like climbing isn't really at what it is today as far as like popularity and all right. these kind of things. So so you've taken these courses. You're just now getting into like you, you like you said, guiding stuff. Mm -hmm. so keep keep rolling with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I first took um, I after undergrad, um, my girlfriend and I ended up didn't marrying her. Unfortunately, we're not married anymore. We're still friends. Um, you know, in regards to being awesome co-parents with each other, to our children. Uh, you know, and that's another thing. You know, life sends you different directions. Sometimes you have different goals, and sometimes don't work out. But you know. We moved to the Washington, D.C. area together. So I started cutting my teeth not only at Seneca on a monthly basis, but, you know, climbing the cliffs of uh, Great Falls National Park there along the Potomac River. Yeah. And, um, Carter Rock there in, on the Maryland side of the Potomac River. And that is when I jumped into the guiding thing. I noticed uh, the American Mountain Guides Association um, was like technically at that time and it's still, you know, the premier guiding institution to go through. Yeah. Uh, in other words, like I wouldn't want someone cutting into, into my leg that didn't go to, you know, the school of, or, you know, orthopedic medicine sure. uh, operate on me this weekend. Like, I don't know if I'd want someone to take me out climbing who's going to tie a bunch of shoelaces to a tree and lower me down, you know. Right. So you want someone who knows what the hell they're doing. 
And I grasped onto that. So the first course I took um, was the American Mountain Guides Association Top Rope Site Managers course at Great Falls. And this gentleman has turned into a mentor of mine, especially in the past couple of months, Jim Taylor. Jim Taylor is based out of Fayetteville, West Virginia, where as you guys, a lot of you might know where uh, the New River Gorge resides. You know, the mecca of sandstone. And I'm talking bullet hard sandstone, uh, nuttle sandstone. It might as well be granite. I mean, it's amazing. Some of the best sport and crack trad climbing I've ever done in my life um, is at the New River Gorge. And um, long story short, I took that course um, with Jim at that time, not knowing really what I was doing. So I took a lot of time to rehearse those systems, um, those hauling systems, those anchor systems, you know, to get really proficient in them. And I think I took the test maybe like a year later, a year and a half later, when we moved back to West Virginia, knowing that there was, you know, um, an opportunity to possibly guide more, to, to educate and instruct more in West Virginia, you know, because of Seneca and the New River Gorge and so on and so forth. Um, so I went back down to Fayetteville, New River Gorge, and took the assessment with Jim. And um, yeah, just dove into it, man. I mean, I was still working full time. I still have the same job uh, working full time now that I did then. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I do work, do work for, for GIS. Yeah. Yeah. I do work full time. I, I work for the county government here, which is Montegalia County, West Virginia. I do all the geographic information system mappings for the planning department. Um, mm -hmm. You know, do a lot of the environmental permitting, like floodplain management. Obviously, we have a lot of floodplains in West Virginia yeah. and stuff. So if you do want to um, develop or construct in the floodplain, you have to go directly through me and my office. So we do all the mapping and permit work for that. So, but How again, did you get into that? say what? How did you get into that? I mean, it just sounds like. Well, I mean, my degree is in geography. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So just it whoop, okay. meld it together. Yeah. Okay, together. Okay. Yeah. All right. So still doing that, um, obviously, with the age of COVID. And then I'll, and I'll jump back into the guiding thing. You know, life, life takes over sometimes, a lot of the time. And I just got out of the guiding thing, got out of the teaching instructional thing. And, you know, climbing, rock climbing it was always there, but I wasn't doing it as much. So, okay. um, and, and I don't know why. why. You don't I, know? Why? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why, because you know, there's like no you moved away from it or like it became inaccessible. Like it just, I wouldn't say inaccessible. I mean, like, again, we live five miles from Cooper's rock and, you know, Seneca and new is only like a two hour drive, maybe sure. two and a half to Seneca. So I, I don't know necessarily what happened because my climbing partner, Evan Moser, of 15 years was always trying to drag me back into it. Not and like, you know, in the times change where, you know, we had children um, and, you know, my wife at that time wasn't really into climbing. So I might've kind of followed more her wishes and not really necessarily wanting to get out and climb. And, I, and no, I don't pin that against her whatsoever, but in a relationship, there should be yeah. a circle of giving you know, and balance. yeah, yeah. Balance. And I lost that man. I totally lost that. And, um, it hurt, you know, like I go out climbing being like 20 pounds heavier, not that yeah. weight has anything to do with it, but being in shape kind of helps, you know what I mean? Even the mindset of it too. Just oh, like, yeah. yeah. And th the mental aspect of climbing is just about as important as the physical aspect of climbing, because, you know, yeah. The physical aspect helps because you know you're strong enough to pull that move or you know you're fit enough to climb multi pit you know, to get you to your end goal. But the mental aspect of it is just as important because you know that you are strong enough mentally to get you through those cruxy sequence, to get you across that scary ledge, to traverse out right or left above a hairy piece. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's all there, man. And it, yeah. it all comes together. Um, in regards to that. And that's what I love about it. And I lost a lot of that. Sure. But so what was the, why the return then? Just the love, man. The love. I, it was founded in me that that was rock climbing is like my Mr. Miyagi. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. That, did, your, did your partner ever, you know, did he give up? Like, did he keep pressing? I mean, he just. Never. Man. Never. Yeah, and, you, and, so, and, and I, I bring that up because 
I, there's a term in my men's group that we call EH, emotional headlocking. And yeah. it is the sequence in which it takes somebody getting another man to come to F3. And, the, mm -hmm. you, and, and it started this way with me too. Yeah. A buddy of yeah. mine said, hey man, I found out, I found this workout thing uh, that I'd like you to come to. And I'm like, what, what is it? And he's like, it's at 530. I'm like, stop right there. You know, I'm like 530 in the morning. And I mean, this is like 2012 Bryce. You like know? get the hell out of here. I got, I stopped doing that in 530 AM PT shit when I left the military. You know? <laughs> but he, never, he was, re, he was relentless. Hey man, you should come to this thing. 530 to 615. Uh, you know, and I've just, no, 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 no. Finally, like three months later, he is like, just come. And I'm like, fine, I will just to shut you up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm living in my car at the time. Just gotten divorced myself. Like yeah. lost custody of my kids for a couple months. Like I have nothing. I have nothing to like push away at this point. So I'm like, sure, I'll finally go. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that he continued to sh to show up for me and push, and push you, man, pushing you. And so important, everybody. Like, I mean, it's a beautiful honest. thing, man, to have a friend like that. And I hope you guys still hang out. You know, um. And I, and I would, I would chalk Evan up to that, yeah. uh, that type of dude, uh, because he'd be like, man, I'm going bouldering. You want to go? And I've never been a big boulder because I always get freaking hurt when I boulder. You know? <laughs> like yeah. I always yeah. pull like a tendon or get real script, you know, I, it's not always now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he was always just dragging me out, man. Like yeah. and I last, last September. So September of 19. Uh-huh. He and I got back into it. Like I'm talking, dove right back into it. I was going through a very hard time. It was about a you know year and a half after my divorce, um, and knowing full well, uh, you know, Sarah and I, um, uh, Sarah and I dated, you know, after the divorce, but then we weren't really together, and then we got back together last fall, so over a year ago. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, <laughs> she has just pushed me into what I love and supports it fully. Like I can't even imagine going through not only this shit I'm going through this weekend, yeah. but just, I mean, like Mike, you should think about, you know, opening your own guide service yeah, you, yeah. and we'll get into that. I mean, yeah, like you are good at what you do. I mean, you're, you're a good climber, but you are a good teacher, man. Like, you know, we went on a trip together, our first big trip, uh, this past February, we flew into Vegas, but we beeline straight from the airport to Joshua Tree. Gotcha. And I climb with some friends who guide out there in the winter time. They just um, take off from Seneca Rocks, and as Tom Cecil's group and some of his guides, yeah, uh, they have a permit to guide out there in the uh, winter months because I mean it's 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 stellar. I mean it's like bluebird days. I mean like every day. Yeah, of the we have a really, we have a really solid connection in Joshua Tree. His name is Rand Abbott. He is our he's Gallant Fuse West Coast climbing coordinator. Yep. He is a paraplegic. He is paralyzed from the waist down. Wow. And he leads leads five thirteens. Oh my gosh, man! <laughs> I let's go out there. I just want to meet this dude. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, most likely going in December. Okay. Well, I, I'll need a couple more months. But. I would say, yeah, no, but so, yeah, so they go out there, you go out to this big trip to Joshua Tree. She's, she's, you know, just being a big support element of yours. So, yeah, I mean, talk about, you decide to, you know, you come back to climbing, you re, you get recertified. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the idea of this guiding thing pops up and obviously it's like a business. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. just, I'm going to start guiding today. And like this customer just pops up and they're like, please yeah. take me. And the, and the park is like, please come in and guide them. So, like, take us through the process. Yeah, um, absolutely, man. I mean, again, I noticed the love I was missing, like, sometime last fall. But all of nine, all of 20 happened. And we know what a shit show 2020 has been. Yeah. But what I had noticed is Americans, let alone in, individuals all across the globe, are been getting outside more. Right. And, and really recreating outside. And again, we have amazing rock climbing in West Virginia, just like you guys do in North Carolina. By the way, I'll get into that later. North Carolina, oh my gosh, amazing. Yes, we are very lucky. Yeah. Um, long story short, um, I went through uh, the AMGA single pitch instructor course. I showed up in the parking lot of the New River Gorge uh, Visitor Center uh, to meet the instructor, and it was Jim Taylor again from the course I took in 2007. Yeah. He's, oh, I was like, yeah, man, what's up? 
and he was like, what are you doing here? Can't you, well, like, you have to take the course again? And I was like, I don't know, do I? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> do, like, do I? Um, he's like, I thought you could just, like, test out or do a refresher and test out. But it was still very beneficial, man. Because, like, you know, things, systems change. The tools we use, a lot of Grigory work, you know, um, has changed. And, man, I was so into it. I took, like, the assessment, like, two weeks later when it was, he was offering it. Yeah. You know, buzzed through it, loved it um you know uh so now for all of this stuff are you just paying out of pocket or are you using any va benefits like what are you I, doing yeah i'll be honest i i am um, i'm just paying out of pocket i i did notice um especially that goes out to you guys as well um the amga does offer a vet based course i don't quote me on which one it is i don't know if it's the rock instructor course or the amga spi course but I have seen it on their program schedule. It is a vet based course specifically for veterans submit the proper, you know, like your DD two fourteen or other discharge papers. And it's like a scholarship, man. Like, you know, uh, I think you have to pay the application fee and I'm not sure, but there might not be much else you have to pay. And yeah. I mean, I think that is fantastic. You know? Yeah. I mean, and I bring that up and obviously, you know, your time got cut short. So like, the you know i don't know where you're where you stand in the gi bill situation but rehab stuff like that but the army specifically has created a program cool the cool program cool. for certifications and licenses and like they're trying i think the pre the 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 focus is on the trades you yeah. know like on plumbing heating electrical stuff like that but yeah. They also do outdoor recreation certifications. Like I know a guy that got his class A free fall license. Wow. I know people that have gotten AMGA to, you know, gotten their tuitions paid for and stuff like that. So message, you know, to solidify what Mike said, people looking for, you know, you want to do these courses, the, the, the grants, the money is out there for combat, for veterans. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just got to be willing to be flexible. I think most of the time. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do because I mean, these courses are only offered on the select, you know, on the, the select days, select places. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And the one I think I saw for the vet one, and again, I apologize. I don't know if it's the SPI or even the higher discipline, but I think it was like in Washington or Smith Rock in Oregon, you know, but I mean, hell man, be a pretty badass place to go take it, you know. No, I mean, and this is, you know, and we we will, as people have seen for Gallant View, we are focused on climbing. This is something I'm highly passionate about, about creating a, an opportunity for funding like this to be available to veterans. Yeah. That complete courses, you know, so this is something, plug real quick, Patriot Challenge. That's how Gallant View, we raise our, our finances per yeah. year. It is the month of February, and we are going to be doing some pretty awesome uh focused efforts specifically on funding our climbing program, which funds indoor programs. It funds outdoor re retreats. But I would like to see in the future it funding a program that when you come to me and say, here is my AMGA SPI certification that I passed the test and I paid 900, you know, $1,500 for the, for the course. Yeah. Here is the, here is the refund. Here is your check wow. back for completing that. You yeah. know, that's, that's an enticement, you know, not to say, like you showed that you showed like you, you, you're like, I care about this. I don't care if it comes out of my own pocket, you know, just mm -hmm. like I, we want to see the commitment there first and then pass it. Let's, let's, you know, and then, then you use that money to, to start paying the fees that come along with starting a business. So yeah, absolutely. You your investments. Now you want to be a, a you want to start a business. So yeah, through that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, again, I had, you know, I went ahead and dived into the SPI course. Um, and I, I strongly recommend some type of wilderness medicine course as well. Unfortunately, mine was canceled due to COVID that I was signed up for. Um, so and then this happened. So I am on a little bit of a delay program now, you know, yeah. so I hope to get the Wolfer done this spring. And I really want to get into the rock uh, guide course uh, sometime in 2021, maybe like the fall. And um, really get the guy service up and running here in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, because um, I got to throw a plug out there, too, for Gritstone Climbing and Fitness. Um, it's our brand new gym that opened uh, the month of August here in Morgantown. Uh, amazing facility, guys. And, um, you know, I really wanted to offer um, these individuals, which is sad to me because I know Joe got two emails this morning laying in the hospital bed <laughs> before I was practically up for people who want to transition already from gym to crag. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. 
get this RoboCop thing off me, like I would love to do that, but it's going to be a while. And it breaks my heart because I want to make sure these people are setting their anchors, you know, safely. I want to make sure they're properly, um, you know, taught how to do so, you know, utilizing a single piece of static line, equalizing that piece of static line, you know, blocking beaners opposite the post, so on and so forth, you know, so. I'll wait for you to come back, Bryce. I just got your text. Yo. Hey, I'm yeah, so I am so yeah. glad you stayed on. My yeah, computer, yeah, I, I, yeah. My computer I, literally I figured, shut off. <laughs> yeah, I figured if I stayed on, you could log back in and we'd still be rolling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I am not logging off because then we have to start all over again. Yes, my man, my man. So yeah, literally it just like stopped working. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. What's the, last, what's the last thing you heard me say though, Bryce? I forget shit. Uh, it was you were wanting to go. You um, your Wolfer got canceled. You want to go to the Rock Guide course for 2021. Yeah, yeah. So again, I mean, you know, you're taking a medical course. Everyone gets kind of weird when you're up in each other's faces. So my Wolfer was canceled, um, and I really would like to have. I had it before, but you know, again, previous you know conversation we were having a lot, a lot. I let. Like my AMGA cert, the Wolfer go, and if you don't research, they usually give you like a little bit of a few months leniency, maybe to you know just re to just re up. But you know, I had to go through the full kit and caboodle again, and that's costly, man. It really is. Yeah. So uh, again, I mean, uh, you know, I'm so excited to get Ascension up and going. Um, I had all the curriculum written. Um, you know, Sarah's helping me, like trying to get the website going. I do not have a website yet just because of, you know, working from home, my kids, like virtual school the first few mm. weeks. I mean, it's just crazy up here, man. So, and then now this has happened. So, you know, I'll be able to probably instruct and do like top rope site, you know, management, anchor building stuff, but like maybe like leading and stuff. It'll probably be a few months, you know, realistically. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of funny. Like, I don't know if you went through it or if maybe it's just something to get, like I've only gone through, I highly doubt it, but, but there is that, there is that moment when in climbing where, where you, where you accept, like, no matter where you are, you hear me? Okay. You're kind of glitchy at the moment. You are. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Um, when you, you know, like you look at a route and you're like, oh man, you know, I, I can't get to the top. So why try? And it, it, there's this switch later where like, especially leading, especially like leading into the unknown where you're like, I don't even know how high I'm going to get on this. <laughs> like, like, and you get to that point and like you give it some tries and like you go through the cycle and, and you're like, I, I shouldn't try this anymore right now. You know, yeah. I'm just yeah. damage. And, and it's just like, all right, hey, let, let me down, you know, and, and it's like, cool, you know, and if you got a good partner, like you guys are just so dialed in that yeah. like it's those incremental red point, you know, it's just that red pointing of, of, of life where you're just slowly kind of making your way up through it. And it's, yeah, man. it's, it's like we go from this like wavy kind of life to just, okay. Even well, keel, even I mean, keel. You're, you know, you, you were, you're steady going up your route of making ascension guiding, come in, come to, you know, come to through it, Jen. you're, you're pushing into the void, into the unknown. Like these, these situations are coming, you know, and, and you're just like, yeah, this is what happens. You know, I, yeah. I just place my protection and if I have to lower down and try again some other time, then I'll just yeah. do it then. And, 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 you know, you asked, you asked me earlier if, um, and people may ask me is so, like an injury as devastating as this. A lot of people would probably be like, man, screw that. I'm not going back to climbing. Right. Um, but I look at it as maybe a teaching moment, you know, no matter how devastating, sad, 
you know, um, costly. Right. <laughs> um, uh, monetarily, that is. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it may it may be, but I mean, I, I already started like letting the positive comments come in from this climbing community. You, I mean, everybody, man, like I'm really thinking about like risk management, risk analysis, like when you're at the crag, you know, when Sarah said like, well, let's just come back, Mike. And like, you can do it when you have pads. That way, if you don't feel like doing the crux, you can bail off. Now you know where the good gear is at, you know, and just stuff like that, man. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it. I think I'm going to approach things like uh, um, a little bit differently. I mean, you know, getting upwards to 40 almost. So, yeah. Well, I mean, um, it's something, I want to go back to something you said about the helmet. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I look at the helmet and it's something that's helped me restructure how I look at the helmet, too. Yeah. I'm not wearing my helmet for me. I'm wearing my helmet for my 12 year old daughter, Haven, my 10 year old son, Kellen, and my four year old son, Jax. Like that's honestly why I'm wearing a helmet. That's fantastic, man. And because yeah. and and those are the variables that tack on to our experience now. Yes, I want to push into the void and I want to push myself into climbing grades that really tax me physically and mentally. And yeah. like, but there's always that factor of like, is this worth what I will put them through? You no know, question. And like, if it's no, it's like, okay, then this is where we stop. You know. Yeah. And, being totally at peace with that, you know, in this like a type of like 10 isn't enough. 11 is it. 11 isn't enough. 12. Let's go. Push, push, yeah. push. Top rope isn't enough. Lead. I want a sport climb. I want a trad climb, you know? And yeah. We're stopping there. Free solo ain't ever happening. Oh, no. I Yeah. You don't want to get me on that conversation. I might get a lot of people not like me, but. <laughs> like we just, we have other things to think about now. And yeah. As much as, you know, I mean, Tommy Caldwell has the same thoughts too. Oh, it's amazing. You know, and yeah. so it's, it's just this crazy balance that we have to go through as people, parents, you know, other sides of relationships. Yeah. Um, if, if I can elaborate on that a little bit more yeah. in regards to the children thing, um, I had a, uh, I had a, I think it was yesterday morning before I was called back to my second surgery. It might've been, I don't even know what day it is. I do know it's Wednesday. <laughs> but um, I had surgery Sunday and then I had one yesterday. So it might have been Monday. And I, I FaceTimed with his mother and, he, you know, she gave him the phone. And I was like, buddy, this was just a freak accident. Uh, Daddy didn't know it was going to happen. I do not want this to deter you what you think climbing, rock climbing can do or happen to you. I mean, you know, I took a calculated risk, but that, again, maybe I should have reassessed, but I was feeling strong. You know, you know what I mean? But there's, things I could have done maybe like the pads or something or just bailed, man. Yeah. You know, um, to limit the suffering that I've put some of these people through, but I had a long talk with him. I was like, cause he loves climbing at this new gym. Yeah. He loves, loves it. Like it's more of a controlled environment. You know, it's colorful. It's lighted. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, he loves hooking up to the auto belays and going up to like really tall. And he'll, like he'll zoom right up it. Mm -hmm. And I, I just had a, long conversation with him i was like what happened to daddy is very few and far between you know and, and i've also what you said bryce i've been like we take him outside evan and i, I was talking about my client partner he has two boys as well and um I, we've been trying to do a really good job of wearing our helmets like when we're around the kids because again you're setting an example for safety but you also don't want to see them get hurt. And you sure as shit don't want to get hurt in front of your kids not wearing a helmet. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Yeah. So one thing I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Specifically, now we're just going to kind of shift towards stewardship. Yeah, and man. Something that we've talked about before, you know, as, as everybody can lovely see my Carolina Climbers Coalition hat that I have on. Um, they are stewards of the North Carolina, South Carolina walls. They've opened up tons of property for us to climb here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. So near you, you have this place, Cheat Canyon. And yeah. talk about the Cheat Canyon Coalition. You were Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Like, let's like that's ultimately these coalitions are these are the like the 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 stewardship meccas and i really love that you have done this and you know kind of talk about that yeah so um chi canyon climbers coalition is a very new um is it a loc is that how you say that llc L yeah. no no not llc uh 
local LCO, local climbing organization. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, um, Too many so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So we officially got our nonprofit uh, back in the uh, late, or no, I'm sorry, like kind of like early fall of 19 is when everything became official. Um, we realized um, from a group standpoint of a lot of people who like to recreate in the Cheat Canyon, what was out there? And I'm telling you guys, it's rustic. Like, you know, we don't have a lot of trails to these climbing areas. A lot of these climbing areas are very remote, but they are amazing. Yeah. A lot of it's like really gritty, gray sandstone. You know, we have tons of bouldering. Um, the whitewater rafting up here in the Cheat Canyon is amazing. Obviously, this is a climbing organization. Sure. Um, but we just realized what was out there in the Cheat Canyon. You know, and we came together as a group and realized that we want to protect this. We want to provide access, you know, to these climbing areas um, and try to develop a membership base where we can get money going in towards those climbing areas, you know. So yeah. no, it's been really important to us. And unfortunately, again, you bring up 2020, 2020 kind of hit us. We've had multiple events canceled. That was going to be our first event. But and of course, I'm buggered up now, but our first legit event is um saturday i think it's october 17th um i thought it's 15 yeah 17th is a trail day at cooper's rock state forest awesome. yeah we're really excited about it we have a couple sponsorships uh setting up uh out there or providing uh stuff for us for the trail day we have the forest service uh cooper's rock state parks forest service working directly with us blazing trails that they want fixed um because you know during COVID and stuff, We uh, a lot of these people, uh, like we talked about earlier, have been out recreating, bouldering. People, I mean, we have had cars from all over the place bouldering. Because, again, once the guidebook came out in, like, circa 2008, that place blew up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have a lot of rogue trails. You know, I think I, I've always called them rogue trails, you know, like where people just kind of go past or whatever. You know, you just kind of go off to the, oh, there's a boulder over there. Let's just go that way. Right. And, you know, it wasn't like that until this year, um, gotcha. not this bad anyway. So I do know the Forest Service is going out there, the staff. I'm, I've gotten in um, uh, with Jan. He's our superintendent out at Cooper's Rock State Forest. And um, they're out blazing the trail forest for the ones to work on for the event on the 17th. I mean, it's just awesome, man. Yeah. So, you know, we just want to be the stewardship of this area and be, you know, we have a bolting management plan that uh, our treasurer has worked on, Kevin Sean. Our president, Andrew Leach, is a, a, a really good route developer in the area, a really strong young guy. Um, so, I mean, it's just really exciting, man. So, yeah, it is. And, and, like, it's so important, too, because, like, and, and anybody listening that can go to that Trail Day in Coopers, I, I bet, go to it. Because yeah, yeah. it is, one, for me, like, the first trail day I went to was actually in South Carolina at the climbing fest. It wasn't even like my home crag mm -hmm. and just the like connection that you have to this place now. Once, yeah. you, once you've been a part of like putting a trail together, uh, some por portion of it, there's just, you know, whenever you go back there and now thankfully I've done a trail day at pilot. Like every time I walk this trail, I know that I was a part of this. Right. And, it, and like the park, it, with mo most of these places, like you said, the, the amount of people is increasing. Even before COVID, the amount of people going outdoors is is increasing. The access yeah. to it is increasing, but that calls even more for those marked and well drained trails. Because, like, that, what you, you know, those rogue trails you talked about. That's how erosion happens. You know, that's how we start killing the forests. Hmm. And you know, with with the tool, the right tools, and the right crew. You know, it is just, it's a great time. And I mean, and then it might be climbing trails and approach trails, but there are other people, you know, it's, it's a benefit for everybody to open up some of these places. Oh yeah, man. I mean, and that's the thing is uh, we're trying to develop uh, relationships with landowners. There's a really cool sport crag that has some mixed lines as well as a great bouldering area. Um, you know, uh, here I I'm talking right outside Cheat Lake that we really want to work first on acquiring this property with the access fund that's kind of like our first big thing we want to do i mean just amazing sandstone already has some routes you know sport routes on it i mean and that's where i go to cut my teeth out here locally the majority of the time easy access yeah you know like five ten minute hike you know what i mean that's right and throw up five six seven lines in an evening and get a good workout in and also i mean you're outside climbing so you know that is that's yeah. it I mean, 
it's so awesome. And that's kind of like, you know, I'm in pilot right now and I'm, um, I'm relocating to this area, hopefully in the next couple of years, but it comes back to like, this is what I love to do. And I want to consume my entire life in, in climbing, in the mountains, in outdoors, and also in that stewardship realm. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to give back to the place that gives so much to me. And I mean, and even, it even came to like my gym, you know, TR Triangle Rock Club when the whole pandemic thing and everything got shut down and they were asking people to opt in. Like mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, I felt just, you know, felt the call to continue my membership and sustain that gym. You know, did my $75 a month really do that much? I don't know. But to me, it, it, it was more of this like this place gives me so much. This is the least like at least I could do to keep possibly keep the lights on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I love that outlook on it because, again, you look at whatever money you donated or whatever trail work you put in and then you end up acquiring something like that. And you're like, man, I help with that. So it's even more rewarding. And I hope one day we can acquire this crag through the access fund and the in the landowner. And it's going to be super rewarding because I was on, I'm, you know, I'm on the board currently and you look at it like, man, we did that. Yeah. And pay for everyone to access it, you know? Um, and the cool part, the cool part about the climbing community too, that I like so much. And I mean, it, it, it happens when you're climbing with people, but it also, it's the same with this because this isn't like a territory thing, you know, like this is where, you know, I hope that you you are connected with other coalitions about how they do their grant funding, you know, their grant writing. You know, I'd love to connect you with AJ here at Climbers Coalition, Tommy Caldwell at Co the Climbers Coalition. No relation to the real Tommy Caldwell. Um, but, <laughs> I, see Tom you know, Caldwell's, I see all his like posts on Mountain Project. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so and it's like, you know, we're all stoked for each other. You know, it's like. It, when you're watching somebody climb a route and you're just like willing them, you're like, I just want to give you energy to get up that route. Like, I don't even know who you are, but like, yeah. I just want you to do it. And it's the same with like getting these agreements and, and, and expanding and doing these things. It's not like you're going to pick up the phone and call this other coalition and be like, Hey, you guys, what did you guys do with this? And then be like, that's our sales territory. You know, like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're so connected and we're so willing to help each other. It's uh, that's the another part of why I love it so much, too. You know, I mean, uh, in establishing the Cheat Canyon Climbers Coalition, you know, we had massive contacts and outreach with, like, say, Southwest PA Climbers Association. Um, and, you know, we researched what they were doing. I mean, because that's just right above us. You know, I mean, we're only like an hour and some change from downtown Pittsburgh, technically. And in Western Pennsylvania, you have multiple little crags that are really good. You know, you have breakneck rocks, lost crag. I mean, all kinds of good stuff, man. You know, yeah. so, so awesome. Yeah. Well, you never feel like you can fill up an hour's worth of time, but it always happens. Yeah. So, I mean, I, when we talk about climbing, guiding, instructing, whatever, man, I could sit here all day. Can't wait. That's that's right. So, all right, I'll give you your final words, and then I'll I'll finish us out. Okay. Well, I mean, all I have to say is um, climbing for me is like, I mean, let me go back to this. I started Ascension Climbing Guides. The word Ascension means to find a higher level, to, do, to get to a higher like power, right? So it's kind of a spiritual definition. But the way I was looking at that, that's rad. But I want these people... To, for me to be able to instill confidence in them through climbing, for me to help them instill, instill that confidence to them to reach that higher level, but not just from a vertical standpoint, but in their mind as well. And that's where the high is, man. And when you see people do that, it, it's unbelievable, you know? So, you know, I just, whatever I can do, you know, you know, for the Gallup view or, you know, whatever I can do to educate people through climbing, especially, you know, through veteran based climbing as well. I'm there, man. Let me know. Appreciate that very much. And, and you're so right. I mean, this, uh, the, to ascend, I mean, it is, it is so powerful that like, I really like that you went, you know, and did that. And, you know, I'm, I'm involved with quite a few other organizations that focus on outdoor stuff, you know, no barriers, their motto, what's within you is more than what's in your way. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just this this internal kind of desire to want to continue to to to, to climb higher, you know, and, and it's our crew that helps us do it. It's our that helps us prepare mentally, physically, spiritually for it. 
No question. And, um, you know, that's it's it's really awesome to see you come full circle back into it. And yeah. You no, know, I know you're going to be back in action real soon, and I'm really happy that we got to talk, even though the circumstances. And so, every for everybody, we're going to put Mike's uh, social yes. media stuff up, up on the computer. And mm-hmm. my son's having a meltdown right now, so we'll figure out what I, that is later. Um, I will say this real quick, Bryce. Um, I, I will. I will play my best. Keep social media posts going through Instagram and Facebook. Find me at Ascension Climbing Guides on Facebook and Instagram. I'll be doing anchor videos when I'm still bumming my leg. You know, I'll be talking about different things. So please, please, you know, check in. I'm really going to try to get this going early in 2021 as long as I'm okay to. But anything, man, I can do, you guys let me know, okay? It's been an absolute blessing to be on this talk with you today. I really appreciate it, man. It's healing for me to just to be talking about it sitting in this precarious situation in a hospital. So it's, it's healed me already. You know, just from that standpoint. I love it, man. And anybody out there, wherever you are in the country, if you want to help support the Gallant View Climbing Program, Patriot Challenge, we have a team established, Climbing for Veterans. So go join it. Uh, the main effort will be February of 2021, but we, all, we like to get started early. We like to get people signed up. So that's, that's how we're going to fund our climbing efforts in 2021. So, Mike, again, thanks for joining us. And everybody yeah, thanks, else, man. have a great rest of the week. And remember to be brave, be bold, be gallant. Yeah, man. Peace and gratitude, guys.